Almost 50% of the fish consumed worldwide now comes from marine farms. Overfishing has destroyed much of the ocean's natural resources. Is New Zealand at risk of depleting its seafood stocks? It's the early hours of the morning at the Auckland fish market. Fishmongers, retailers and wholesalers want to check out the catch before going to auction. The market in downtown Auckland prides itself on the sustainability of its wholesale and retail seafood operations. Toma is a seasoned fisherman, originally from the Cook Islands. He is the expert buyer and manager of the retail area of Auckland's biggest fish market. Well, I'm buying a bit of everything today because it's been a little bit shorter on fish the last uh, week. So, you can see today, I'm ready to buy everything, like snapper, kerakee, gurnet, John Dory, kingfish. So, have it to be in the right price though. Quality is the most important thing because I can see it's which is pretty good. It's coming towards the weekend now, so I just want to make sure I've got enough stock by buying today and tomorrow. Because market only runs from Monday to Friday. 20 tonnes of seafood is traded every day in this modern auction room, provided by about 200 suppliers. At 6 a.m. sharp, buyers are ready to bid at New Zealand's only Dutch auction. The bidding starts at about $2 above the expected per kilo price. Then, every 10 seconds, the price is dropped until a buyer bids on their keypad. The process guarantees all bidders a fair share of the catch. Oh, the auction was pretty good, and the price is up and down all the time. But you can see with Turkey at the moment, we're not, we're not up to about $7 a kilo. That's quite expensive, really. I'm quite lucky because I've got another boat coming in, so I'm quite happy with that. So. In many parts of the world, depletion of fish stock has created an even bigger demand for certain species. In New Zealand, our huge appetite for snapper has become controversial among commercial and recreational fishing punters. Some experts believe we should educate consumers to buy different kinds of fish. I think New Zealanders could focus more on eating the, the cheaper or the, the more fish regarded as, as bait. Um, these fish, when in fresh, are actually beautiful fish to eat. But in New Zealand, there's a real culture around eating um, the beautiful white fish. puts a big pressure on the stocks of things like John Dory, Snapper, and, and Hapoka. We can educate people by putting these interesting little sardines or things like uh, yellowtail mackerel and um, you know fish, fish that people regard as, as, as lesser fish. If we show them how to cook it, and, and we put these fish on the menu, that is, it's going to take the pressure off the, uh, the, the stocks like snapper and uh, you see right now that the snapper quota has been reduced for the little guy, the, the people going out every day. The important snapper one area is very much under pressure. It stretches from Northland to the Bay of Plenty. The possible depletion of these stocks has prompted the government to take action. The Ministry of Primary Industries has set new catch limits for recreational anglers and stricter controls for the commercial fishing industry. From 2014, the daily recreational snapper bag will drop from 9 to 7 fish. The minimum size will also change from 27 to 30 centimetres. Commercial fishing fleet activities will also be increasingly monitored. To retain the, the stocks for future generations, I, I believe we need to essentially catch less fish um, from a commercial level. Um, if, if we don't uh, look after these stocks in the, in the future, um, you know, fish will become very, very expensive. You know, we also need to keep the premium quality of fish in New Zealand um, and focusing more on the, the artisan fishing industry where, where, where small guys will go out and, and long line fish uh, versus, versus using netting. Are we overfishing our oceans? Will future generations be able to enjoy seafood as we are today? International research highlights the possible total depletion of a number of fish species by 2048. A 2010 report by the Ministry of the Environment warns of some New Zealand species being at risk. John Tanton Clark from the Ministry of Primary Industries is confident about the sustainability of our fisheries. New Zealand's fishing industry has a, a reputation internationally for uh, strong sustainability outcomes. 
Um, that's a result of the management system that we use, which relies on uh, limiting catches and creating um, rights to uh, catch certain quantities of fish. New Zealand fish species um, are generally in a healthy state um, where we have uh, information to suggest that um, one or two species uh, are, are not in such a healthy state. Uh, for all of the management action has been taken to make sure that they have the opportunity to rebuild to healthy levels. Motu Hauri, commonly known as Goat Island, is of cultural significance for Ngāti Manuhiri, the tangata whenua of the surrounding land. This first marine reserve in New Zealand was established in 1977. Each year it attracts more than 350,000 snorkelers, sightseers and marine scientists. In New Zealand, we regard marine reserves as an appropriate tool to protect marine biodiversity, uh, but we don't regard marine reserves as uh, a suitable tool for managing fisheries. We rely on setting catch limits uh, to control how much is taken from uh, fishery resources as the best tool to ensure sustainability. But conservation and advocate groups are sceptical. The New Zealand fishing industry, in terms of sustainability, is really a mixture of good and bad. For example, we've had species that are down to 5% of what their natural population size is, and our three major areas of concern in terms of the sustainability of New Zealand fisheries is stocks becoming depleted and uh, secondly, the use of methods that result in a lot of bycatch and thirdly, methods that are impacting negatively on the wider marine environment. It's really important that recreational and commercial fishing does coexist in New Zealand because recreational fishing is such a big part of New Zealand culture that we make sure that that's going to be sustainable for the future. What's really important is that for both recreational and commercial fisheries, the stock remains at a good level because that's in the best interests of both of them. Back at the market, Toma makes sure that nothing is wasted. Everything you see in this bin here, we go that lift over like frames, snapper frames. Cherokee frames, Gurnet frames, most of that, that going to used to be for uh, grey bait or going to go for fertiliser, so there's nothing wrong. The fish market is also home to Auckland's only open fire smokehouse. Operational since the beginning of the 20th century, it is sheltered in this heritage brick building. Once a week, more than 400 kilos of snapper, salmon, mullets, trevally and tuna are rubbed with a secret ingredient before being smoked and infused with the whiff of tea tree fire. Smoking fish is serious business. As a bestseller, it contributes hugely to the economy and sustainability of the market. Toma not only has to balance fish stocks at the market, he is also the master cutter and today has a big challenge. The weekly catch of yellow tuna has just landed from the islands and he must cut it and deliver it to the city restaurants without waste. This is my first one I'm going to cut for the day because I'm the best cutter around here at the market. So I'll show you how we're going to do it, eh? Cutting tuna is quite, you know, you need people with uh, plenty of skill because it's quite expensive fish. So you, don't want to, you want to make sure it's not going to be any wastage on the bones or on the skin, you know. So it's very important because he pays the top price for tuna. So you want to make sure you get that piece of recovery out of the whole fish. Like this, a lot of Japanese use that for making, I know they scrape all the meat out. You can see there's hardly any meat left, but normally they will scrape all that meat out, make sashimi, whatever. So there's nothing going to waste. There you go, that's the first loin. Look at that quality. Eh? Quality is the byword for Toma and the Auckland fish market. This keeps the market commercially viable and sustainable. And quality is also the essential ingredient of Ben Bailey's operations at the Dutsi restaurant. Essentially, we're still landing a lot of tuna. 
in New Zealand. A, a lot of it's getting exported. I think a small percentage of that, that tuna should be retained for, for people like myself that, that, that can show that love and respect and, and, and give our diner, the, our New Zealand customers, the, the tuna experience because it is an experience. What's happening is our bluefin tuna is getting caught in New Zealand, especially on the west coast of South Island. It's all getting exported to, say, Japan or America, and we're importing tuna from the islands. So for me, it's, it, does, it doesn't add up. Um, the, the bluefin tuna from the South Island is exceptionally good. I think we should be able to use it here without feeling guilty. We should make sure the portion size is very small. It should be a, a quality, very expensive, highly valued ingredient that gets respected. Strong opinions to highlight once more the conflict between our appetite for seafood and the sustainability of fish species. And Ben's approach to sustainable fishing practice is very clear. Yes, I'm an advocate of long line fishing because the fish gets uh, brought onto the boat live. Um, if you can imagine a big net getting sweeping through the sea and essentially, in my opinion, raping the sea, you're taking everything you, um, everything the net chooses to take. Long line fishing, you can essentially target a certain species of fish. You're always going to have bycatch, but it'll be a lot less. The fish will come on board live, it can be ickied in the head, it can be dropped into an ice slurry and preserved very well. Being sustainable for me is, is, is um, it's about choosing your suppliers very well. You know, it's about making sure you're um, buying your fish from a, a source um, that you believe is sustainable. I, I have a fisherman and he catches fish to order. So I ask him for 20 kilos, he goes out and catches 20 kilos. And then he comes in, he stops fishing. One fisherman, one chef. For me, that's the ulti ultimate sustainability. If everybody was doing that, we wouldn't have a problem. To control overfishing, we think it's really important that consumers can make decisions about where their fish is coming from. That's why Forest and Bird have released their best fish guide and at Greenpeace we've got our red list of 10 species that we want consumers to avoid purchasing because those fisheries are not managed sustainably. But Toma has different ideas. It's not about reducing the, uh, the quota. Sometimes you have to look after the fishermen themselves because they're the, you know, they're the ones doing all the hard work. So that's why I end up like this. If we haven't got any fish, we won't get any fish. The debate on the sustainability of the fish industry is a contentious one. Commercial, recreational and retail players are still at odds about the best practice to guarantee the sustainability of the fishing industry. In New Zealand, we are not sure that future generations will be able to fish for snapper as we do now. Are we all doing enough to protect our marine resources? There is no simple recipe. But for now, let's keep appreciating our fish sustainably.